You can try anything and nobody can say, well, that's not how you make Atmos music records. I think it's so flexible that you can be really, really creative and all the tricks in the world, even in mono, don't matter if your balance is bad or if you're doing something that's distracting. Hello, Andrew Sheps here. We are back at Rue Boyer working on a low roar song called David, but now we are going to work on the Atmos mix. The way the renderer works is that you have 128 inputs total. So these 10 in purple are the 712. So you basically have seven for the speakers around you, you've got one for the subwoofer, and you've got two for overhead. Then you have 118 more what they call objects. Each object is just an input, and you can pan that input anywhere you want. I'm kind of building three different worlds. I'm building my front wall world, building my full room world, including the top, and then I'm building the world that is rotating and spinning around you. And then here is the first sort of Atmos specific thing. This is the Dolby Atmos binaural settings plugin. So this plugin just controls the Dolby renderer to say what sort of distance should things be. And if we scroll down, you'll see that there's a bunch of stuff that's mid and things that are far. I think one of the most important things is the fact that it's super fun to listen on speakers, but 99 point something percent of the people who will ever hear an Atmos mix you do, at the moment we'll hear it on headphones. Hopefully, because there's a headphone component, I think this has a lot better chance of sticking around than any of the previous surround formats for music. Now you can get to the point where any version of the mix, speaker or headphone, can all come from the multi-channel immersive format mix. And I think that points to a bright, future.